Hey team, Connor from HBA here. This is what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. And we can see these four 3D scanners here. So this is something that we're working on at the moment. We're putting together a bit of content for you guys around 3D scanning. So diving a little bit deeper into the CAD modeling, uh, yeah, 3D modeling and CAD uh, world. Um, so we have these four scanners here, uh, all at a basically relatively affordable price point compared to the more kind of professional options. So I think the most expensive one here is about uh, around $2,000 or it's less than $2,000 uh, US dollars anyway. So what we've got here is we've got the Creality CR Scan Otter. So this one just came in today and I've just just bought this out of the box uh, now basically and I'll give a little demo of using this one in just a moment. We also have the 3D Maker Pro uh, Moose, so they've all got quite funny names, but this is definitely the cheaper option of the bunch. I think it comes in under 500 US dollars. We also have the Shining 3D Iron Star here as well. Uh, that's a more expensive one and possibly the best. I don't want to kind of say that before I test them all properly but um, this one's kind of the most hopeful that this one will be really good um, but it does require a lot more grunty computer to run it as well and then we've got the Revo Point range 2 here as well so uh, currently we have our main scanner that we use at HPA is a Peel2S um, and that scanner is a little bit dated. Um, it's very good for scanning smaller objects, great accuracy, good resolution, um, but it is getting a little bit older now. And we were looking into options for scanning up bigger areas, things like body panels for vehicles, developing aero, things like that, or engine bays, um, or just bigger parts as well. So the focus of these scanners here was to get something that would be more suitable to that, but we also decided to look into a lot more afford affordable options and kind of compare them to one another to give you guys a little bit of an idea of maybe what you can expect in this price range and what would be the most suited to your application. So over the coming month or two, we're going to look into to producing some content alongside that. Just wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser, I guess, of what was coming up. Um, but just... While we're on that topic, I'll just give a bit of a demo of using the Creality Scan Otter. Just get set up here. Uh, scanning this engine block that I've got, or half of an engine block. Uh, this is one half of a FA20 from uh, Subaru engine from the BRZ or GT86. Um, and I'll just get the Creality machine plugged in. So for those of you who aren't familiar with 3D scanning, I know I talk to a lot of people uh, who aren't in the kind of CAD space and they know what 3D scanning is. They've maybe seen a little bit of it but don't really understand what goes into it uh, or maybe how simple it is or how accessible it is. So if we just jump onto my computer screen here, I've got the Creality Scan app open. And all I've done is just plugged the scanner into the USB port on the computer. And keep in mind, I just got this scanner out of the box probably less than an hour ago. So we can just get set up here, go a new scan. I'll just type in a project name as FA20 block into here. And I'll just give you a basic demo of how to scan something. So here it asked me for some configuration settings on this. So the object, it's a normal object, it's not a face or a body. Uh, the size here, this is medium, so that fits into this kind of uh, under 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters uh, cubed. Uh, we're going to use features for tracking. We're going to use the geometry rather than the texture. There's not a lot of different colors uh, to scan on this block, so it's better to track off the geometry rather than the texture. Uh, the accuracy, we'll just do a fast scan, and we actually do have this on a turntable as well, just to make it easier to scan around. Although I will just scan one side of it for now, just to keep things simple. And that's all there is to it. I can just hit scan and then 
get going pretty much. So we can see the different uh, cameras here. One of these captures the texture and one kind of shows the exposure there. So you might be able to see there's just kind of a faint red glow to it and that usually shows that the lighting is, is pretty good, the exposure of the cameras ca capturing it. And this scale bar down the side, left hand side here shows uh, the data that it's capturing being uh, in this case I'm too far away, it's saying move closer and we can see if I move closer into that optimal range that's kind of the optimal uh, scanning range for the scanner and then if we move too close it starts getting too close and again you start to kind of see the image we're starting to lose the data that we're capturing again as well so if I move back it'll do the same and eventually start to lose it again. So you want to kind of work in that inside range there. So I'll just start that. And then it's just a matter of basically slowly moving uh, around the object, capturing data from as many angles as we can. And if you just move kind of smoothly, it's pretty simple to just scan the object and you'll see on the side of the ribs and stuff there's kind of data missing so to get that we just kind of have to change the angle of the scanner and point it at those surfaces on the side um, yeah and you can just basically slowly move around see we lost a bit of tracking there but it found it again move around and just try to fill in all those gaps and capture data from every angle. So the scanner is basically projecting a really fine light pattern onto the surface and then using other cameras to uh, look at that light pattern and see how it kind of falls onto the surface and then from that it can build a 3D model and understand the shape of the object that we're scanning. Um, so it does that by, it has two cameras uh, capturing that light and it has a projector and it uses a uh, technology called triangulation to determine the shape and distance of the object. So I'll just keep it basic. We'll just leave it at that. But you can see how it would just rotate it around on our turntable here, making it easy to capture all the data. Take a little while to work around. And I'll just stop that. And then from there, if we're looking at my computer screen, this, what we have at the moment, is the point cloud. So all of these points that we see in here are the data points collected from the scanner. Um, and basically from there, what we want to do is complete the scan uh, and we can see here this is also still the point cloud and what we can do is just move from there and move on to convert this into a mesh and then bring that into um, our CAD software for example Fusion so I'll just click here and do a one, one click process not sure if this will work or if I would need to come and play with this a little bit more but we'll let that start uh, processing as we go and we'll just move on to another topic and maybe come back to look at that in a moment. Just move some of this out of the way. So while that's doing that, uh, I'll just jump onto my screen over here and find there. So. Uh, the other week on the podcast, we had Joe from 3D Systems as a guest, um, and Andre talked to him about a bunch of topics, mostly around the 3D printing space. So for you, those of you who aren't aware of what 3D Systems is, um, they're basically the original creators of 3D printing. So back in the 1980s, I think, um, the founder of 3D Systems came up with 3D printing, um, and they also do a lot of other 3D uh, manufacturing and technology things as well but uh, naturally being uh, one of the leaders in the industry and uh, Joe being a big part of it as an applications engineer specifically around motorsport applications um, he has a huge amount of knowledge about 3D printing the technology where it's come from where it's going and what's possible 
Um, so they get into talking about the possibilities with FDM, which is kind of the 3D printing that most of us would be familiar with. 3D, 3D printing plastic parts, kind of building them up layer by layer. Um, but they also talk a lot about SLA and SLS, which is uh, 3D printing of metals um, and all the possibilities there, because that is kind of Joe's bread and butter. Um, they talk about how it's used in the motorsport industry. Um, it's used all the way up to the likes of F1, doing some really awesome things. Unfortunately, a lot of that was kind of covered under NDAs, so they couldn't get too much into it, but they definitely covered a lot of topics. Um, but they also cover what's really important with uh, 3D printing to consider is the practicalities around manufacturing. So that's when you look at 3D printing a part compared to if you're going to uh, CNC machine the part on a 5-axis mill, for example, uh, when you would choose one over the other because even if you're an advocate for 3D printing, it doesn't mean it's always uh, going to be the best option. So it's good to understand when's going to be the best case for 3D printing or some other manufacturing method. Uh, so we'll just jump back. Uh, I'll recommend, uh, yeah, jumping over to listen to that podcast if you're interested in learning more about that. It's definitely not just uh, interesting for those of us who are into CAD and things like 3D printing. Uh, if you're generally interested in motorsport, which I assume most of you are, very interesting to listen to. Um, so I'll just jump back over and see how that 3D scan's going. So we can see here that it's just converted this over to a mesh. Uh, and we also captured the color texture here. It's pretty boring. It's just uh, cast aluminium. Uh, we can turn that off if we wanted. Or well, not. It's lagging a little bit. But that's just a basic mesh of what we captured there. And we can go down here to export. And I'll just export this to my desktop as a STL format, which is a mesh file. Um, that's kind of the standard thing that we get from a 3D scanner, and I'll call that FA20 block. So that's just saved onto the desktop, and that has exported that there. So if I jump into Fusion 360 here, I'm in the mesh toolbar, I can just insert that mesh from my computer, go to the desktop, FA20 block open, and that'll just dump that in there. And from there, obviously if I'd spent the time and gone around and scanned the whole thing, I could have a complete engine block in there and I could work with that mesh from there to convert it into um, a 3D model or just use it as a reference for scan-based design. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to make a bracket or a water neck or something that comes off the side of the block, or just assemble it uh, in an engine bay, for example, and make engine mounts if you're doing a, a engine swap. Uh, that would be the perfect example. So that just shows you in a couple of minutes the kind of results we can get. And you can see how it wouldn't be too difficult to capture that whole thing, clean it up a bit, and get it in here all, um, all tidied up and complete. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into 3D scanning if you weren't already familiar with it. Uh, we'll just jump over to our giveaway. So we got one day left to enter here, and I'll get Geordie to drop, drop the link to this into the chat. Um, so this week's giveaway is a Holly Terminator X Max. So um, you can win that and the HPA VIP package um, as well. So the a Holly Terminator X Max is... While it's tailored to more of the American V8s, it is actually a universal standalone ECU. And as you imagine, it's good to up to eight cylinders for sequential injection and direct fire ignition. Um, the Max version, which this is, is also has drive-by-wire and electronic uh, transmission control for the modern automatics with those American V8s. Um, so completely free to enter, recommend going along there and entering your f for your chance to win that package. And I'll just make a note as well that we have uh, giveaways uh, continuously, every two weeks there's a new giveaway. Um, so I'd recommend just bookmarking this page, HPA, uh, hpacademy.com forward slash giveaway, bookmark that page, every two weeks you can come back and 
completely free to enter for your chance to win whatever we're giving away. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.